to look for better uh, career opportunities or better jobs uh, for them. Um, in fact, about half of the people living uh, in Ontario are uh, living within the greater Toronto area. And that really just goes to show how big the opportunity is in terms of career and work um, here in Toronto. Also, if you try to do a quick Google search about uh, Toronto, you would definitely always see it making the list as one of the best place to live or one of the most livable cities. In fact, right now, Toronto is also the fastest growing tech hub in North America. In 2019, we generated about 80,100 tech-related jobs um, and, our, and the city's tech job growth was greater than the job growth in New York, Seattle, and Boston all combined. So that's just how amazing Toronto is right now. And in terms of opportunities, there's really a lot of opportunities um, in Toronto. Also, um, the city is also very culturally rich and diverse. Um, about half the people living there are not born in Canada. And from our students alone, half of our um, full-time student population are international students. And we are also known to be one of the most culturally diverse institutions in Canada. Um, we have over 13,000 international students currently enrolled and about more than 1,000 Filipino international students enrolled as well. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. If you want to meet people coming from different backgrounds and different countries, it's very easy to do that. And of course, if you miss being with your fellow Filipinos, it's also very easy to do since there's over 1,000 Filipinos enrolled um, at Centennial College. Okay. And of course, we are a designated learning institution and our programs are eligible for PGWP. And while you are studying, you uh, can definitely work part-time, 20 hours per week and full-time during breaks. And as Tony had mentioned, uh, you can pretty much have an idea already if you compare it with the minimum wa wage rates. Um, and an another great thing to take advantage of is if you are traveling with your spouse, they can also work full time while you are uh, studying. So both of you get to earn while uh, during your stay in Canada. And of, of course, eventually it would also help you land a permanent residence eventually in Canada as well. So these are our campuses. All of them are located within the Greater Toronto area. Our main campus is our Progress Campus. Uh, about more than half of our students are located here. And a lot of, we offer a lot of programs here as well. It's the home of our School of Business, Hospitality, Tourism, and Culinary Arts, and some of our engineering and applied sciences programs as well. Uh, some of the um, features of this campus might have been highlighted in the video already showed earlier. Um, and if you notice, we have our very own uh, cafe and restaurant that our culinary students themselves uh, get to operate. So these are just some of the things that we do to really uh, encourage our students to have that, or to make sure that our students really get that hands-on uh, learning experience. And you can really pretty much really expect the same thing across all of our uh, full-time programs. We even have guest suites and event centers for our um, um, hospitality students to use as well. And a lot of laboratories as well, different kind of laboratories depending on your program uh, for your use. And of course, a lot of industry partnerships as well, since there, there are going to be a lot of placements um, included in the program usually of the students. Okay, and in our progress campus is also where we have um, our student residences. It's called Centennial Place. You can visit the website for full details. But um, if you want to have a glimpse, uh, here is what it pretty much looks like. Uh, you really get to enjoy state-of-the-art accommodations with a 24-hour fitness center, spacious study and purpose-built lounges, and even fully furnished rooms. Definitely the perfect location if you want to just walk to your uh, classes every day. Um, it, in terms of convenience and, of course, the amazing amenities as well, it's definitely worth uh, considering to stay here at Centennial Place, although it's a bit more expensive compared to other um, off-campus housing options at Centennial Place. It's going to cost at least 1000 Canadian dollars per month per student. But for off-campus housing, other off-campus housing options, there are a lot of affordable ones. We actually have, have a Facebook group where there are regular listings of places you can stay in as a, an international student. And I think the cheapest one I saw, um, I think the, when I checked it last month, it was around 350 or 400 Canadian dollars. So you can really 
expect a lot of affordable accommodations like that, ranging from 350 to 600 uh, Canadian dollars per month. So there are affordable options, but of course, if you want that convenience, you can definitely um, choose to stay at Centennial Place. And in our Story Arts Center campus is where we have our creative programs. So if you have a creative passion that you would like to pursue, we would like most likely offer those programs here. We have programs in film, photograph photography, um, um, fine arts, graphic design. So mostly uh, the creative programs you would expect uh, um, that you would expect. And we actually also have a lot of facilities here for the students to use. We even have our very own state of the art newsroom with live uh, broadcast capabilities. Uh, so a lot of creative programs. And if you want to start um, or pursue your creative passion in Canada, we can definitely um, show you a lot of programs to choose from um, in this campus. And in our Action Week campus is where we have a majority of our aviation and aerospace programs. Um, and this is also where we have our School of Transportation. Um, but since there was a growth in the in tourism in Toronto, before the pandemic, we were getting over 20 million tourists every year. Um, we, as a publicly funded college regulated by the Ministry of Education, we do our best to meet the demands of the city or the province that we are located in. And since business was growing, tourism was growing in Toronto, and also with that um, tourism, so we decided to open a new campus for our aviation airspace programs, namely our downstairs campus. It only opened in January 2019, and it's now where we have majority of our aviation and aerospace programs. We have a lot of amazing partners as well, helping us with the development of our curriculums, uh, like Bombardier Aerospace, KF Aerospace, and Transport Canada. And not only that, they also um, provide us with equipments that students get to use uh, throughout their learning experience. Uh, for example, Bombardier um, actually donated this um, CRJ200 jet, which our students get to use for their learning experience. And in our Morningside campus is where we have our School of Community and Health Studies. So if you have a health background, we would definitely also have programs for you. I often get a lot of inquiries from students with nursing backgrounds. Uh, if you go to our website, you will definitely see a lot of nursing programs, but unfortunately, those are mostly only available to domestic students. So instead, what students with health background do with us is they would apply first to a different health-related program. And if they really want to pursue nursing or a specific course not offered to international students, they would reapply for it as a domestic student. And by then, it's going to be uh, four times more affordable since you're going to be applying as a domestic student. But in the meantime, here are some of the options we have. Uh, our, for January, we only have two programs left since the, uh, the rest are already closed. Uh, we have the Office Administration Dash Health Services and Pharmacy Technician. Both are two-year programs. Uh, but for September, we have a lot more offerings. Uh, those two programs are available as well. Also, massage therapy, personal support worker. Personal support worker is uh, the one-year program that a lot of students love to enroll in. And um, it's, it's already closed for January, so it's really in demand. We also have recreation and leisure services, which is a two-year program. It has subjects related to gerontology, so it's a good um, option as well. And we also have uh, fitness and health promotion and healthcare environmental services management. Usually our students would first uh, take these programs, uh, especially if they have um, a health background. We are also the oldest and one of the largest publicly funded college in Ontario. So over the years, we were really able to develop our facilities, teaching and industry partnerships for our students. Just to give you a glimpse, these are our um, um, industry partners or some of our leading industry partners. And what they do is they help develop, develop our curriculum, making sure that whatever we're teaching you is going to be relevant to uh, the industry that you're going to be in or the kind of work you're going to have after you graduate. It's almost like, uh, it actually it's like having your uh, potential employers already build your curriculum for you. So you know it's really going to be, uh, whatever is being taught is going to be relevant um, to the field that you're gonna be in after you graduate. And of course, uh, they not only provide our students with, uh, they, they not only help us with the development of our cur 
curriculums, but they also provide our students with field placement opportunities, co-op opportunities, and a lot of our students eventually manage to land jobs in the companies they do their placement in as well. You might even um, get a chance to work with the best and brightest of Canada's corporate players, maybe even landing a placement with companies like Google, Bombardier Airspace, Samsung, and Ford. Okay. Moving on to our programs, we actually have a lot of programs to choose from for international students. I believe we now have over 160 full-time programs available to international students. Of course, it can be a bit overwhelming to go through all of that. That's why we have amazing partners here like um, CIC who can really help you narrow down your choice. And of course, choose the best program that fits your background as well. Okay, I'm just gonna be highlighting a few of these programs, but if you want to see the full list, you can check it out in our website. Okay, so these are the top 30 programs that most of international students would um, enroll in. This is based on um, in the enrollment of our uh, January 2019. And as you can see, it's mostly business, hospitality, engineering, and um, applied sciences programs, mainly because we have a lot of seats in those programs and we are really known for our um, engineering programs and hospitality programs as well. Um, you might not see a lot of health programs here, although we do offer health programs. It does run out of seats pretty quickly. So it would be best if you apply as soon as possible to make sure that you can uh, secure your seat. And of course, the earlier you apply, the sooner you can apply for your study permit as well, which is actually a lot harder. Uh, usually the main problem of the student is getting uh, the study permit approval. The school application is actually pretty easy. We process in just two to three business days, as long as all your documents are complete. In terms of program delivery right now, uh, we're looking at using the campuses again for some of the lab work for uh, September. So those are mostly our hybrid programs. Uh, but for most of our programs is either online or hybrid, but with plans to go back to full face-to-face -face once allowed by the government. And it's uh, of course still eligible for PGWP. And it, no matter what the, um, the program deliver is, even if it's online or hybrid, uh, since we are a designated learning institution with an approved COVID-19 readiness plan, our students are um, still allowed to travel to Canada uh, for their studies. As long as the program has plans to go back to face-to-face, um, it's going to be eligible and you can travel to Canada, provided that you have the right documents with you as well. Also, for the past seven years in a row, we have been the number one college choice of international students studying um, in Canada. Like I said earlier, we have over 13,000 international students enrolled and really rich in terms of diversity since we uh, these students come from over 154 countries since uh, 2010. Um, one of the main things why we have been very popular among international students is we really uh, do our best to provide a lot of services um, and support to our international students. Just looking at the countries where we get most of our students from, uh, we would usually have an office there that you can really visit so that uh, if you need any further clarifications or you would like to have a consultation with me or any one from our team, uh, we can definitely do that. Unfortunately, right now, the office is still closed. Um, our office is in Makati, but we have I haven't been there uh, uh, since, I think, uh, almost <laughs> a, over a year now. I haven't been back to the office yet, so we're, we're still working from home. But hopefully soon, we can go back again to <clears throat> uh, using our offices. And even once you arrive in Canada, we really still provide a lot of services to our international students. Like, for example, we have the Employment Resource Center who helps our international students when it comes to uh, looking for part-time or full-time jobs. We have the success, success advisors who can also help you uh, if you are struggling academically. And of course, the international advising team, which comprises of registered immigration consultants who you can consult with anytime. Uh, you can just book it and uh, you can book a ske to schedule with them in our uh, website and they can help you if you have any concerns with your study permit extension, PR application, or even PGWP application. The only thing we can really help with is the initial study permit application. That's why we have partners like CIC who can help you uh, out with that. 
And even for Filipino international students, we have been the number one choice for quite some time already as well. Uh, we actually have a lot more students now, but based on this enrollment data, about 25% of the Filipino international students studying in Ontario chooses to study at Centennial College. That's why we have over a thousand international students enrolled. And for this September, we had over a thousand five hundred applications from the Philippines alone. Um, we're expected to double our enrollments, um, the do double the enrollment of our 2019, which uh, which is our highest um, enrollments uh, from the Philippines. And like I said earlier, in terms of requirements, it's pretty straightforward and we process in just two to three business days. The main thing to keep in mind, uh, we're also one of the schools that Tony mentioned earlier, uh, which waives IELTS for uh, students that studied here in the Philippines. Just present a certificate of English as a medium of instruction from both your high school and your college, and you don't already, uh, have to take IELTS. Even if you're not uh, from the Philippines or you're not a Philippine passport holder, as long as you studied both high school and college here, we can waive the requirement for you, okay? And we also don't have any application fees. Tuition fee, pretty much the same across all of our full-time programs. It's about 16 to 19,000 Canadian dollars for one year or two semesters. Um, <clears throat> in terms of payment, we only require students uh, to receive your LOA. We only require students to pay the initial deposit of 2,650 uh, Canadian dollars, although before you can register for your classes, you have to settle the fees for the first semester. And the 2650 initial deposit is already deductible to that amount. So if, if the tuition fee is 16,000, usually per semester, it's going to be around 8,000 Canadian dollars. You can already deduct the 2650 if you already, if you decide to pay the deposit first and then apply for the study permit. Uh, although you can also pay for the first semester right away and um, so you don't have to worry about it since you will also have to settle it anyway before the start of the classes. Okay. Looking as well at the International Student Barometer Survey, which is a global benchmark for international student experience. Uh, it's really amazing we got these results, especially considering that these results came from, from the responses of 4,596 international students currently uh, studying at Centennial College. And so you can see, they are happy with the faculty, the career services. Um, SAGE is our international advising team. Um, the laboratories as well, and 96% of them say they feel really engaged uh, with their studies. Even with the key performance indicators, we have consistently ranked as the number one college in the greater Toronto area for both employer and student satisfaction. What this means is our international students are happy with the quality of education that they receive and our industry partners or employers are happy with the students that we send their way. Okay, so that ends my presentation. I'll be here as well to answer some of your questions. Thank you for that wonderful presentation, RC. Again, uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm Regina Aguilar, and I'm one of the Senior Advisor of Canadian Immigration Consultancy in uh, Cebu. Before we proceed with our... Uh, Q and A. I would like to share to you one of our students, and uh, they are one of our students with Sandinia College who took the study pathway to permanent residency. Let me share to you uh, my screen for a while. Can you see it now? All right. This is uh, Floyd and Aryan Samson. They started their Canada application with uh, CAC way back in 2017, right? And then we submit their application first via uh, provincial nominee program um, under New Brunswick, right? Uh, Floyd was able to get an ITA under nominee program and then, um, but due to the lacking number of years based on the in-demand occupations that time in New Brunswick, his application for nomination did not materialize. So, uh, Floyd continue, let me show you the, the timeline, sorry. All right. Floyd continues application under study permit and open work permit for his wife. All right. And it took him around four months to uh, submit a complete application for admission from uh, 2000, uh, October 2017, but 30 days after that, 
they were granted a study and open work permit. And then they traveled to Canada in January 2018. Three months after arrival, he was able to work as a part-time cook. And then the wife also um, was already two months pregnant by that time. So they have their first child when they arrive and baby Samson was born, of course, citizen at birth. Then Floyd uh, finished his global business management diploma in Ontario, April, 2019. And three months up after that, his postgrad work permit was issued. And then he continued to work for uh, the same company as Lime Cook and as operation support uh, officer in another company. So in 2000, um, October 2020, 2020, we submitted an expression of uh, express entry profile application. And three months after that, naka received din sila ng IPA under Canadian Experience Class category. And then uh, we submitted a complete application for permanent residency July of this year. And um, June, I'm sorry, June 2021, they received the PR approval. And then now they already have their PR card. So if you notice from the time they submit their permanent resident application to uh, visa office, it only took him one month. That is because from the very start of his application, we have been guiding um, the couple the family to secure all the necessary requirements in advance. Um, the spouse is an open, uh, I mean, open work permit, but he's an OFW. That means there are a lot of requirements that she needs to comply first. So that's one of the advantage I wanted to highlight in uh, choosing a representative like CEC with your CIC application. We will guide you from the time you submit your application, even if it starts from a PR or a temporary visa application for study permit. So up to the time to you receive your permanent uh, visa status in Canada. So if you're planning to go to Canada next year, make sure to start your application now. As uh, RC mentioned, January is already full, no? Dalawa na lang uh, available slot. May and September is still open, so you should submit your application the soonest possible time and at least uh, six months before the class starts, all right? Now, I'm sure you have a lot of questions, so we are now going to proceed with our Q&A. I would like to call again, Tony. Tony, please uh, help uh, us facilitate. Yes, yeah, so I will be moderating a Q&A question and answer portion. So to our attendees, if you do have questions, I mean, I know you do have questions, feel free to type them in the chat box and we'll answer them right away, right? Um, RC, I would like to start with the range of your tuition fees. Okay, uh, right now for most of our programs it's around 16 to 18,000 Canadian dollars for one year or two semester, although there are some that uh, that's gonna go up to and um, 19,000, but for most, it's really around 16 to 18,000. Okay. Now, does all of your programs have co-op? Not all, but uh, it would be indicated in the name if it has co-op. For example, it would be, it would, then the program's name would be Business Administration Dash Marketing. Uh, it would have an open and closed parenthesis optional co-op. If it has that in, an, in the name, it definitely has co-op. Yeah. Okay. Now, if it says optional co-op, do, does the school or do you provide the co-op letter right away? So, or we have to request for it? Um, for some of the programs, uh, usually the co-ops, uh, usually they already provide a co-op letter if, uh, if it's already part of the program, usually if it's a field placement, but for most of the programs uh, with the optional co-op, it would usually be provided when they are, they are already eligible for the optional co-op because to be eligible for co-op, you have to first meet their grade requirements, which is posted as well um, in the website. All right, thank you so much. So what is, you, you mentioned, uh, there's this question here about age limit. May, can you tell us what is the oldest student? Were you able to- uh, um, In fact, oldest, but I, I, I did a gather one that's, that was already in his late 50s. I believe there, they have, there have been some um, who have been older already and we don't really look at the age that much when it comes to the application of our students. Okay. Now, for the tuition fee, alam naman natin, pin, ang yung Pinoy, gusto-gusto yung staggered payment plan or yung installment. After paying the tuition deposit, which is how much again? 
uh, 2650 Canadian dollars. 2650 for the tuition deposit. Can they pay the tuition fee in a in an installment basis or a staggered payment plan? So what is the option for them? Uh, we can accept payments uh, per semester. So if um, if they already paid the initial deposit, they have to settle the first semester. They don't have to pay for the entire year. They can pay for the first semester uh, first. But it has to All be right. before they start their classes. They have to um, complete, the, complete the payment before the start of classes for the first semester if they're applying for the regular application. And then, of course, if you're applying for the... SDS, so you have to, um, you know, pay for one year. Next is we offer a program that is related to a mechanical engineering. Yes, we do have a, a mechanical engineering programs. I uh, believe it's also uh, it also that's also the name of the program, and you can definitely uh, uh, we definitely have step international students for that. Okay, now here I believe this question is for the CPT team, Ms. Reggie. Can the spouse? With open work permit, also apply for PR as well? Yeah, it's uh, possible. Usually the spouse um, will gain one year work experience and after that, it's possible to qualify enough for a PR program or any pathway in Canada, either provincial nomination or skilled trade program. Okay. Now in here, um, for the ECE program, RC, is it offered for January intake? Early childhood education. I believe it is, but I think we are we're already out of seats for the early child. Let me just confirm. Uh, but it, it will also be offered again um, in September. For January, let me check if it's still available. Um, so is just... it offered January, May, and September or January and September only? January and September only, and it's already closed for January. All right. So unfortunately, Miss Josephine, the ECE program is already open for September 2022. Now, when will Centennial College start issuing LOAs for the May 2022 intake? For May 2022, we will start uh, this October. This October. And then for your September intake? September 2022? Uh, February next year. Okay. All right. But we can uh, submit applications ahead of time, right? Yes, definitely. But uh, it, the LOA will be issued around the, those dates. Okay. Thank you for that. Now, you all know that the healthcare industry here in the Philippines has been boosted a lot. And then we have a lot of nurses. What possible programs can you recommend for nurses uh, who is interested to study in Centennial College? ROC? Sorry, what was that? <laughs> Sorry, um, you know that there are a lot of nurses who are interested to study in Centennial College. What programs are available that you, you think is suitable for them? Okay, for those with nursing backgrounds, for January, uh, the only Two programs still available is the pharmacy technician and the office administration dash health services. But in September, we have a lot more programs. The popular choice is the one year program, which is our um, pharmacy technician program. And we also have recreation and leisure services, which is a two year program, which has subjects related to gerontology. All right. Now, talking about Ontario, uh, I believe, like, what are other work opportunities or available availabilities for international students for part time? Well, actually, in Toronto, uh, there's actually a lot of opportunities in Toronto. If you look at, uh, if you do a quick uh, search in YouTube, some of our students are doing vlogs there. Uh, you would hear them say that when it comes to looking for jobs, they don't really have that much of a problem since they are. Uh, located in Toronto. As long as you're not very picky with a job, there's a lot of part-time jobs available up in Toronto. Okay. Now, with healthcare, is the tuition fee, is the healthcare coverage of the student already part of the tuition fee indicated in the LOE? Yes, it's already included in the, uh, the health insurance already included in, uh, in their payment. And then what if they're applying with a spouse or with a family? Can they, um, is it already like, um, part of it or they have to add another payment? 
not yet, but they uh, they can also include them if they would like. Okay. Now, do you have other programs for supply chain professionals? We do have a logistics um, program. Let me just uh, get the full name of the. Uh, it's um, supply ma supply chain management dash logistics. Is this a college diploma or post grad? It's a post graduate uh, certificate, and um, it's also it also has call. So that's this is a one year post grad certificate. If they wish to add another um program in the future, what other program can you recommend after finishing this supply chain? We actually have a lot of uh, postgraduate programs, and what our most of our students are doing right now is they would first apply for the first program and then they can just have their study permit extended and choose whatever second year program that they would like. Usually they would often take another uh, one year postgraduate uh, certificate. So by two, after two years, they already have two postgraduate certificates um, under their name. Okay. Now another question here from Karen Joyce. I would like to ask if I can apply a program that is not related to my degree, which I finished here in the Philippines. Um, for the school, we don't really look uh, um, exactly at um, the student's background as long as they meet the academic requirements. Mm -hmm. Although what is recommended is that you apply for a program that is related somewhat to your educational background, your professional background, or a business that you or your family may have, so that it's going to be a lot easier for you in the, uh, during the study permit application. Okay, now I have here a direct message. It says, what program can you recommend? I want to be an IT analyst. IT analyst, I think uh, there's usually IT analysts would have two, would choose from two um, of our programs, whether it's usually software engineering programs or our computer systems networking technology programs. Okay, that's a, again, sorry, software engineering program. Yes, uh, we have a lot of software engineering programs available and also computer systems networking technology or technician. Okay. Now, in terms of accommodation, mm -hmm. in terms of accommodation, how much is, do you have an on-campus accommodation, right? Yes, that one is a bit more expensive. It's at least $1,000 per month per student. Uh, but for the rest, or off for off-campus. Uh, for off-campus housing, I'm sending a link here in the chat. I think there are, there's some if you um if you're really looking for uh, cheaper prices there are some that are that would go from the range of 400 to 600 cad uh, per month i just have to really look for it um i sent a link here of some of the housing options that our students have and our facebook group is also available there as well okay now i have a question here from ina mangyo she is talking about if she do the one plus one or bundle uh, one plus one or the bundle program and then if she finishes the first program and then the other program have um, similar courses, do ha like can she get a credit or what mm. for the second program? You already took um, subjects similar to the sec uh, that which already you already took in the first program. Um, usually it would it would already be, it would reflect in your second program and you, you don't have to take those same subjects again. Okay. Now, uh, for the September 2021 and January 2022, was it going to be face-to-face -face, um, learning already or still online learning? We're still waiting, really. Um, it depends on the decision of the government. But right now, we are already planning to do some of the lab work in the campus for September. So those are the ones with hybrid delivery methods. Mm, all right. So going back to the um, co-op programs, how many, what is the duration of months that they will be um, doing the co-op? I would usually run for also one, se one um, entire semester, usually three to four months. Can senior high school graduates, senior high school graduates go directly to advanced diploma programs or just certificate and diploma programs? They can also apply for advanced diplomas as long as it's not fast track. As long as it's not fast track. Yes. So they have to take the three years. Yes, correct. Okay. Now, what program can you recommend for a civil engineering graduate here in the Philippines? If they already have at least two years of relevant job experience, I would recommend taking the construction management program. 
The construction management is a post-grad program or uh, the diploma, uh, advanced diploma or diploma program? It's a post-grad. I have a direct question here, Ms. Reggie. It says, how much is the total or estimated cost to apply for a study permit? Ms. Reggie? Or Agnes? Ms. Reggie? All right, I'll get back to this question later on. In terms of the LOA issuance, um, RC, what is the turnaround time? Right now, um, our admission team would, would provide a response in two to three business days. So that's Monday to Friday, uh, two to three business days. Okay. Now for airport pickup services, is it free? Does, does, does the student have to um, pay for something or what? It's actually the student's responsibility to uh, book their um, transportation to their place of quarantine or to their uh, the place that they would stay in. But right now we have partnered with Airline Limousine so that uh, we can that they can book it with our registration team and we will have them picked up uh, for uh, to their place of quarantine from the airport yeah. so even though they are vaccinated for like pfizer moderna astrazeneca they are still needed to do a quarantine as long as it's part of the um, i believe they still have to do the three days but uh, i think they, they are already accepted from the 11 days of quarantine okay Thank you. Miss Reggie, are you back? Yes, I'm sorry. It's My okay. internet no. is unstable. With it's regards okay, to there? the fees, yes, uh, it's based on, uh, it, it varies no? based on the institution and the chosen program. But um, the second part of the webinar, we're going to have a breakout session and we're going to discuss detailed about the fees involved. Um, I think RC mentioned already for the tuition fee cost for a year for Centennial. So you can have a, a budget of around uh, 10 to 16,000 Canadian dollar and then additional fees for the embassy visa processing like that um, around less than a hundred thousand will including the CAC fees so later on we're going to give you a more detailed explanation on the fees okay next year is um hello how this is a direct message hello how does an applicant make sure he or she gets a letter of acceptance from centennial college is the acceptance rate high um acceptance rate in terms of um issuing an loa mm -hmm. yes well, usually as long as you meet as long as you are a k-12 graduate there's a good chance you would be accepted already for the program and if you're applying for a postgraduate uh certificate or diploma as long as you have at least two years of relevant work experience in that uh, particular program uh, you can definitely easily get into the, to our programs okay thank you so much for that rc now here is what is the possibility rate of a graduates get absorbed from this from their like co-op company where they work or their practicum it really depends on how well you do as well. But in our experience, we do get a lot of students who eventually manage to land jobs there, especially if they do um, very well. Uh, we actually, in the video actually with the play that was played earlier, uh, there was one student who studied in Centennial because her sister was also, uh, also studied with us and also got the job she wanted because of Centennial. And she too was able to land a job in the company where she did her placement in. Okay, that's really good. Um, here, sorry, let me just read the question. Um, I'm an MBA graduate. Can I still apply for a certificate program or diploma program, or what can you recommend? Should I take a post grad certificate? Uh, for those with MBA, we usually but the it's usually better if you take a program that's also of course that would also of course reflect um the level of education you already received and i think the highest one we can offer right now is our our global business management which is also which also has subjects similar to uh, an mba okay so people are now sending me direct messages so um what if we already paid for the tuition deposit and my visa gets refused do i get a full refund or is there any um um deductions yeah it's going to be uh, refundable there's only going to be a two hundred Canadian dollars deduction from uh, the payment. 
but any any excess amount paid would be refunded. Will be refunded. So let's just say they paid for two six fifty, so they they get to be refunded for like uh two four. Yes, correct. Of course, that's minus the bank charges still, and yes. then the exchange rate. Okay, so please don't get your hopes up because it gets really lower sometimes because of the exchange rate and then the um, bank charges. Okay. Now, um, any more questions from our um, attendees? Did you get all the information that you need to know uh, from Centennial College? Uh, Ms. Reggie, do we have questions from the live? Um, not, I think I don't That's have right. any questions right now here. I haven't checked it yet. All right. Since uh, if there are no other questions, um, we can proceed to the second part for the breakout session. Yes. All right. Now, RC, thank you so much for your time. So the attendees will now be put into a breakout session with the CIC species counselor. 